Mr. Jacobson, hello and welcome uh, to Cyprus. Thank you. Do you believe media literacy is useful for uh, every individual? Yeah, it's, I would say, more than just useful. It's uh, really necessary. Um, there's so much um, questionable um, information on the internet and in social media that people really have to be able to fend for themselves to figure out what is wrong uh, and what is false um, and what is true. Um, journalistic outlets like the one that I work for can help with that. Uh, we try to, try to provide reliable information about what is true or false or somewhere in between. But uh, ultimately, um, uh, people have to use their own critical thinking um, and their own, own sense of judgment and not just simply share the first thing that crossed their uh, social media uh, queue. Um, uh, you know, it's really important uh, to not just, just simply share something with your followers. Uh, um, as soon as it comes across, you, it's really important to just like pause a second and think about whether it uh, you know, might not be true. Um, we try to teach tips and tricks for, for figuring out whether things are true or not. Uh, you can look deeper into um, the sources being cited in the posts that you're looking at. You can look at what other websites and social media accounts are saying about the same information. Um, and uh, really, it comes back to um, teaching people from a very early age, in uh, uh, kindergarten through high school, um, to, to sort of use their critical thinking and not just s simply assume that things are correct that they see. Um, really, when, it, uh, when we um, are writing about it, I mean, it's helpful for us to write about these things, um, but it shouldn't be up to us. It should be uh, you know, internalized with people um, being skeptical about what they see and having the skills to really um, look, look deeper and not just blindly share things, but rather um, try to figure out um, if, if they make sense, if they're true or not. What are the risks um, of not questioning what we see on social media and then we just um, um, uh, share it with everyone? Yeah, well, I mean, um, it's really a combination of the risks uh, between the individual and the social media platform. So much of social media platforms are about um, getting engagement, uh, liking, sharing, commenting. The uh, so social media platforms work in a way where they feed you information that is similar to information you've liked or commented on or shared in the past. Um, the reason is uh, they want to keep you um, paying attention to their platform. Uh, and um, uh, you know, people who advertise on their platform want to see eyeballs on that platform. Um, and the best way to do that is to um, uh, serve up um, um, posts that are similar to ones that they know you already like. The problem with that is that um, social media uh, sites um, uh, then tend to become um, uh, sort of echo chambers where you only see information that you already agree with you never see information or rarely see information that you don't agree with. Um, and it just reinforces people's own personal uh, you know, beliefs and makes it very hard for people who have other beliefs to have any kind of common ground with them. Um, so that, that, that is why um, it's always good to have a uh, diet of news and information that is diverse um, so that you get all kinds of perspectives. Um, and that you don't just simply fall back upon, what, what, upon whatever you already believed in. Um, how institutions and uh, people in general can overcome the problem of misuse of, dig of digital media? So um, uh, we, um, some of the people who we work with um, in the United States at Pointer, uh, at the Pointer Institute in Florida, um, have uh, programs where, and they're free, that like, people can learn some of these tips about how to be a better social media and uh, a, you know, internet consumer of information. Um, people can take, take those courses and learn about things they should be doing as they um, are, are going through their social media feeds. Um, uh, you know, it, it would be great uh, if there could be more efforts at the, at the school level um, to do this. I know um, that there are, are efforts in the US uh, to try to do this, it's not everywhere. 
um, but anywhere that it can be done is a, is a positive thing. In the age of artificial intelligence, um, how will we be able to distinguish between real news and, and fake news? So um, right now, uh, artificial intelligence is not at the point where um, it is dominating our lives uh, as, a, as, as fact checkers. Um, uh, it's got a very you know, um, intriguing possibility for the future about really being able to fool people into thinking um, things are uh, said in a certain way that they, they aren't, uh, completely fake videos and stuff. Um, there's a bit of that, but really at this point, um, the so-called cheap fakes are more um, common uh, and potentially more damaging than the deep fakes. The uh, deep, deep fakes use uh, AI techniques to actually show you a video or uh, give you audio of a person, it sounds like them, saying something that they didn't say and maybe is very different from what they would actually say in real life. Um, there has been some of that. The, the technology is not perfected yet. Um, but frankly, you don't have to even use that advanced technology to create um, uh, content that is questionable uh, and try to share it. You can use more basic technologies, Photoshops, uh, or even to the point of using real images, but just describing them as things they're not. Um, we, we had an example I've been, been showing people here in my uh, presentations of showed a field of cars that were abandoned, uh, hundreds of cars probably, uh, and the social media post said that this is what happens when like an electric vehicle, uh, when the battery dies, they have to throw the car away. Um, not, not true, what we were able to do is we were able to find that through a, a reverse image search on Google, um, find out that that uh, photograph, it was real, but it was not taking place in France, which is where, where the post said it was taking place, and it had nothing to do with uh, batteries being thrown out. It was a Chinese rideshare company that had gone out of business and those are just all of their cars. Uh, so somebody tried to make a political point about, uh, about electric vehicles being bad um, and they were, they were using an image that was real but was completely unrelated to that point and didn't make that point. But if you saw it and uh, you were uh, tempted to, to trust that post, then like you would believe that. Um, and that would be, uh, you know, false. It would just be incorrect. I think uh, internet, social media, they're inundated by um, the, such cases because I see photos and they describe something and then people are saying, uh, this is uh, fake, this, this photo was, the photo is real, but this is not the reason. I mean, there's many, many cases like mm -hmm. this. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, fact-checking organizations like ours are having to um, transition, you know, I'm a reporter by training, uh, I'm used to talking to people and doing research, um, but I'm not a technical guy. I, I don't have, uh, a, you know, background in um, uh, um, coding and uh, like photography uh, uh, in terms of like figuring out the coding in a photograph, like, you know, where it came from and so forth. Uh, so these are skills that are increasingly important. Um, in the fact-checking world, and I think a lot of organizations are, uh, you know, trying to add those to their um, stable of skill, skill sets that they have within their staff. People will believe anything they see on social media. Mm -hmm. um, is it something that, as an expert, do you feel like over the years this is happening more and more often, or...? Um, uh, it's hard for me to tell whether it's happening more and more often, but it certainly hasn't gotten less. Um, I think that uh, um, I think people have um, uh, you know it takes time. Uh, if you um, do research into every single uh, post that seems questionable in your feed, it takes time. Uh, setting aside that it takes a certain amount of skill, skills, and practice to do that, um, so I can understand why why people um, don't want to um, take extra time to 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 try to validate everything they see. Um, so uh, to me, I think that a, a really important point is just um, uh, to, to, uh, to, to again use that critical thinking, um, be skeptical, um, maybe it's right, but you know, just don't assume that it's right. 
uh, and to really be more cautious in sharing things, particularly things that uh, really kind of um, motivate you in an emotional way. Think fear uh, um, is a great motivator. Um, people feel a need to comment on breaking news um, when uh, the very definition of breaking news is that there's not a lot of coverage of it yet. It just happened. Um, so they're sort of flying on their own um, in that situation. And um, that's the most important time when you want to be cautious and you want to pause and just don't sort of share on social media anything that you see because it happens to, to agree with you or it fascinates you. Um, just like pause and think about it, ten, ten seconds, um, and see if you, uh, uh, you know, if that claim that you're that, that you're going to circulate in an hour a day turns out to be wrong, uh, you know that that'll be embarrassing for you. Um, to me, it's better to be safe um, and not just sort of comment on like everything that comes across your social media feed. Just sort of take a step back, uh, disengage. Uh, and think about whether you really want to share it. Fake news spreads very quickly, and the and the debunkings spread um, much more slowly. Um, so that's a, a, you know part of why uh, I urge people not to just immediately share things until it's really been um, proven, um, and and people have um, tried to assess whether so something is really true or not.